Our next guest on the Global Conversation is Mike Pence, the former Vice President of the United States, whom I met here at an international conference in Brussels. We spoke about the war in Ukraine, transatlantic relations, and future common challenges, and what Mike Pence is up to next. Mike Pence, former Vice President of the United States, welcome to your news and welcome to the program. Thank you, Stefan. Mr. Vice President, this is not your first visit to Brussels. I hope you got a warmer reception than the <laughs> first one. <laughs> I, I, I did, and, uh, but the, the first one was a little cold. Uh, a little cold. It was right after we were elected. There was, uh, I understand a, a lot of concern in Europe that we were um, going to embrace a new form of isolationism, uh, economic isolationism uh, in particular. And uh, what I made clear at that very first conference in Munich in 2017 was that America first did not mean America alone. And I'm, I'm proud of the way um, uh, through some stops and starts, we strengthened uh, our NATO alliance. We strengthened our relationship with our European allies. And I think we we set the table uh, for the United States uh, and Europe uh, and the United Kingdom to provide the kind of support that we've all been providing uh, to the courageous fighters in Ukraine. Let me start with the topic that has taken center stage in Brussels, the uh, global threats that affect the security of both the European Union and the United States. Now, congressional support packages for Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan have been hanging in the balance for quite some time. What message does that send to America's allies? Well, I think, I think the message is that a majority of Republicans and Democrats and a majority of the American people uh, embrace our role as leader of the free world. I think you'll see the Congress send to President Biden's desk uh, a historic package of support for Ukraine, for Israel, for Taiwan, as well as take strong steps uh, to uh, stand up to China uh, by forcing the sale of TikTok in the United States. So uh, uh, we have very close majorities uh, in the Congress. I served there for 12 years. I understand the difficulty of moving legislation. On that note, how confident are you that there will be long-term U.S. support for Ukraine? Well, I, I must tell you that, um, that we're, we're entering a presidential year. But the package that will provide President Zelensky and his soldiers with the, with the lethal support uh, that they need to continue to take the fight uh, to the Russians. And then at the end of the day, I just, uh, Stefan, I have great confidence in the American people. The, everywhere I went as vice president and then over the last year as a candidate for president, um, uh, I had one person after another uh, stop me and, and thank me for the strong stand that we'd made to stand with our military, to stand with our allies, to stand up to authoritarian aggression, uh, whether that be in Ukraine or whether it be the terrorist attack by Hamas uh, against Israel or even China's uh, provocations in the Asia Pacific. And I, the majority of the American people know and understand our unique role in the history of the free world. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm confident the American people will demand uh, whoever uh, occupies the Oval Office in the next administration will live out uh, that American ideal. I think that the Nevertheless, people have noticed a little, a little shift. Um, standing up to Russia used to be a mainstay of Republican Party principles, uh, you know, the party of Ronald Reagan, George Bush, John McCain, and others. Um, what happened? What, what, why isn't that the case anymore? Stefan, I think, I think there is a rising tide of Republican isolationism uh, in my party. I've spoken out against it boldly and will continue to. Um, we learned hard lessons in the 1930s, didn't we? Um, you in Europe uh, uh, paid a very dear price. But I, uh, I, I would submit to you that those that believe that we have to choose between solving uh, our domestic problems, our crisis at our southern border, inflation, crime in our cities, uh, and be the leader of the free world, have, have a fairly small view of the greatest nation on earth. But I do believe the majority of the American people in both political parties um, uh, support our allies and, and support American leadership uh, in Eastern Europe, uh, in the Middle East, and in the Asia Pacific. What would you say, looking at transatlantic relations going forward, what is the biggest challenge that we both face 
on both the sides of the pond. I think I think it's I think in the short term, Russian aggression represents a very serious threat to the peace and stability of Europe. I, I have no doubt in my mind if the West were to falter and Vladimir Putin were to overrun Ukraine, it would just be a matter of time before he crossed a border that under Article 5, uh, we as NATO allies would have to go and fight him. It's one of the arguments I've made in my country. I think it's important that we support the courageous Ukrainian soldiers that are fighting for their freedom um, so that our soldiers don't have to make that fight. Um, so in the short term, I think Russian aggression represents the very real threat. In the long term, there's no question uh, that China represents the greatest strategic and economic threat, not just to the United States, but uh, to the West. Uh, and I think only in combination, uh, free nations around the world, will we meet that moment. On Ukraine, Donald Trump has said repeatedly that he would end the war within 24 hours. Do you share that assessment? I think the only way you could end the war in 24 hours is if you gave Vladimir Putin what he wants. Um, and I, uh, I served with the president uh, for four years, and uh, uh, I know he has a way of making statements that express an aspiration. Um, but uh, I, I remain hopeful that the American people, regardless of the outcome of the election, uh, will continue to understand and demand that our leadership in the White House, our leadership in the Congress um, meet this moment, stand up to Vladimir Putin's uh, aggression. You have been member of the House of Representatives in the United States. You have been governor of Indiana. You have been vice president of the United States. Um, you've written your memoirs. I wonder what the world can expect from Mike Pence <laughs> looking ahead. Well, Stefan, we like to say we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. What people can expect is that I'll continue to advocate the values and the ideals that have uh, characterized my public life for more than 40 years. I'm, I'm someone that uh, joined the Republican Party during the Reagan years. Uh, I'm someone that believes in a strong national defense that America is the leader of the free world. I believe in, in balanced budgets and a limited federal government. I believe in traditional values, the right to life. And so uh, the work that I'm uh, committed to uh, the rest of my life is to hold up those ideals and values. And if opportunities come our way to make a greater service uh, to America, I promise to keep you posted. All right, Mike Pence, former Vice President of the United States. Thank you so much, sir, for a great global conversation. Thank you, Stefan. Good to be with Thank you. Thank you.